Welcome everybody. It's Sunday, July 19th. We welcome Mary Relic, who is the administrator, Corey administrator and nurse manager for Matthew Soccer. We welcome Mike Borislow, who is the executive director for Matthew Soccer. And thanks to those of you from the Middlesex League who have joined tonight for a refresher and an opportunity for a little bit more intimate follow-up Q&A with Mary. She has graciously donated her time on a Sunday evening in her home in order to help us. Um, I have to say, you know, Mary has always shown the dedication and commitment to helping the members of Mass Youth Soccer with all of their needs and issues. And she always does so in a very composed, friendly manner. Um, she's you know, one of, you know, just an extremely approachable person. So we're very happy to have you with us tonight, Mary, to walk us little through a little bit. Um, understanding that there's there may be some repetitive aspects of it and for those of you who are on the line if you have a question whether it be in the moment or a general question that you'd like mary to address we'll ask this if in the chat box you could pull down in the pull down menu my name and i'll be the collector of questions for mary so that i can collect anything that seems to be similar in nature for her to address at the requisite time Okay, so over to you, Mary. Thanks so much. Okay, well, thank you, Karen, and thank you all for joining tonight, taking the time out of your evening to be with us. So the agenda is um, we're going to go to the Mass Youth Soccer um, website, take a look at the organization registration, adult registration, risk manager, and risk manager web pages, and the help guides that are available to you there. And then we'll walk you through an adult registration, so how the adult completes the registration and links to your organization. Then we'll go into their My Account, which is what they see after they completed their registration. Um, and then we'll look in US Soccer Connect as an administrator, go over the dashboard navigation tools that are available to you. Look at player lookup um, versus uploading or uploading your player registration data versus using the Club Connect system or the player registration data filters right up to the Mass Youth Soccer Association level. Then we'll look at the admin lookup, um, which is where you find your administrators who register, the filters that are available, there, available to you there, and the reports, and how to print your adult members adult credentials and um, give administrator user permissions. So what we're gonna do right now is look at the organization registration Web page. It is on the Mass Youth Soccer website underneath the administration tab. And this is where you will find all the information you need um, to register your adults and players with Massachusetts. And what I mean by that is your adults will be registered by completing the adult registration process, but you must include the number of adults you have working with you on your fee submission form that you send to Rachel Wu. And that's right here. And then most of you, again, will upload your player information unless you use the Club Connect system as your registration system. So on this web page, we have the instructions on how to prepare your player upload data. And these are the U.S. Soccer Connect specific instructions. And then Mass Youth Soccer created um, Mass Youth Soccer specific instructions to help you um, upload your data more efficiently so you, it, it will show you how to look for errors that you have ahead of time. Then the template for the player data. Um, this is the template that you'll use to upload your players into the US Soccer Connect system. And your data will sit in a holding tank until a Mass Youth Soccer Administrator reviews it. All right then, under the same administration tab, we have the adult registration web page. So we would ask everyone to read the body of this web page. It tells the adult everything they need to do to register with Mass Youth Soccer and um, provides them with the adult registration link. And it also provides them with the link to log into their account once they complete the registration to review the, um, to find their training links and review their registration information. On the right hand side of this web page, we have the adult registration new user help guide and the adult registration returning user help guide. 
Both of these help guides are very comprehensive. This will let the adult know everything they need to do to register with Mass Youth Soccer and all the training requirements and risk management requirements that they must meet before they get their adult credential. Then we'll go to the risk manager information web page. This is where you as an administrator um, will come to look for new information. We do um, post all communications up here on the right. So if you think you missed a communication, you can look there. The most important document on here would be the risk manager responsibilities and guidelines document. This is what you will use. It provides you with all the information to um, manage your adult members risk management um, responsibilities in the US Soccer Connect system, which eventually brings you to the point where you can print their required mass use soccer adult credential. Then also on the web page, we have help guides, more help guides that will give you tips and help you move through the system more efficiently. So it will save you time if you if you do take the time to read some of these. And again, we have the adult registration portal and we have the login portal. And then to the right, we also have, which, which is new, the administrator proof of query verification form, which you as an administrator would download and save to your computer. Um, US Soccer Connect has changed how we query verify somebody in the system. And in order to get that checkbox to approve not now, for those of you who remember the old system, um, the checkbox used to appear. Now it doesn't appear. You have to upload this certificate after you go through the process with the adult, and then the checkbox appears and you can query verify that. Mary, could you just clarify that? So after the sure. process is complete is when you'd upload that document, not in the yeah, midst of it? Well, correct. So after after you review the adult's Corey acknowledgement form along with their government ID, uh, make sure all the information is correct, then you would upload this document and check them off as Corey verified. And I will go into a little more information once we get in the system um, to, to tell them exactly what they need to look for and how they can Corey verify. Great. Okay. All right. So first we're going to register. So you could, as an adult, you would click on the registration portal and we would ask that you read all the information presented to you. Um, there is a forgot password function here that you can use for forgot username or password. Read the information um, and then click on the register now button. I also want to let you know that if the adult has duplicate accounts, uh, something that needs to be cleaned up in US Soccer Connect, they can call the US Soccer Connect helpline and US Soccer Connect will help them um, clean up those accounts and make sure they know their correct username and password to register to the correct account. So we're going to register as a returning user for this demonstration. You're provided with information on top of each registration section. So we would ask that you read the top prior to moving on. Um, and we are not registering as that. Um, now we're presented again another landing page where you review your information, you can edit your information, and if all is good, you would click the continue button. The information on this page tells the adult exactly what they're agreeing to and going to provide during the process. Once they read that, you would click, or the adult will click, uh, register as coach admin, that's across from their name. For the program, it's adult query registration. Now, because we're using a return, returning user um, at, for demonstration purposes, the information is auto-filled in some areas. If you're not sure if you have a photo, you can click on arrows. It shows you have a photo and what you have uploaded. Then you would review your information, again, making changes um, if need be. Your primary organization is required. So this is what links you to the organization you're participating with. 
And then you would choose the roles that you have within that organization. You can choose as many roles as you, um, as you have. Then you have a secondary organization you can register to. Again, choose your roles underneath and then a third. If you belong to more than three organizations, you can contact the National Soccer um, Court Administrator, me, and I can add more organizations to your account or you can contact the US Soccer Connect helpline. Uh, then you'll put in your information. Basically, this is for Corey. And we have the Kids Safe Disclosure Statement questions. Please read them carefully um, and uh, answer them honestly. Once you have all that information in, and you click save and next page. Mary, question about the picture on the last one. You don't, you don't need to toggle back to it. If there was a picture already in the system, which was of course perhaps a different system, would that have carried over or will substantially everyone need to upload a new one? So if, if you registered for the first time in the 2019-2020 the, the registration year in US Soccer Connect, we could not bring those photos over. Now, if you were previously registered in the old affinity system, those photos are still in the system. You might want to update it, but they're in there. Okay. All right. So the, we have the adult participant agreement. We have the authorization for background check agreement. And then we have the Corey acknowledgement, the request for a Corey, Corey acknowledgement and um, kid safe disclosure agreement. Okay. What I, I'd like to point out here too, is that if this, if your first name and last name are not here, you probably signed in under a family member's account information and we, we cannot process background checks for you. So again, make sure it's your name and then agree and continue. If it's not your name, you can log out and contact the support helpline, the Soccer Connect um, helpline, and they can provide you with a login and click stop sign. I'm too busy with the other camera. There we go. Uh, U.S. Soccer Connect can provide you with your username and password so that you can complete the registration process. There is no payment due, so you click no payment due, continue. And then again, here's more information. If you do not see the continue to background check button, it is probably because your background checks are valid for this registration year. If they're valid for the registration year, we will not process a background check of Corey on you. If your background checks are due to expire because you're a returning user, you'll be presented with the continue to background check button. You'll want to click on that, enter your full social security number. Again, make sure last name, first name is your last name, first name and date of birth. And then you would hit submit background check. Okay, and we're not going to submit it. We're gonna log out. And then I'm going to um, log in to show you what the account looks like for this adult. So that's important to note that for folks who perhaps their quarry is due to expire mid mid year and year being fall and fall 20 spring 21 um, that it will come up for them so that they don't embark on activities in the fall and then all of a sudden uh, have to cease those activities mid mid season. Right. Um, sorry about that, Karen. I need okay. to. I'm noticing one of the themes in in the instructions, which is good for us to note, is the emphasis to read. Um, certainly, a lot of information. Certainly, the disclosures. And uh, I think, you know, the society we're in, we want it to go fast, 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 and we just want to check the box and get going. But of course, it's important to read it in this way right. more so than anything. If you read the information that's available to you, the process will actually go faster because we do have more requirements now. We do, you know, we have the Federal Abuse Prevention Act, and we do have um, the U.S. Soccer um, Concussion Policy. So. If you read it all, it will go quicker. Um, right now we're in the account um, of the adult that we just registered. So you'll see their photo. Under their photo, you'll see print documents. So if you are already Corey verified, you do not need to do that um, to come here and do this. Um, but if you have not been Corey verified, you would click on 
the print documents under your name, receipts and forms. You need to make sure you allow pop-ups um, because it, it comes up as a pop-up receipt. I just want to show you that. So that would be your Corey acknowledgement form that you're, you as the administrator would um, be verifying the information on for your adults before you upload the proof of verification. Okay, so that's where your adult members get the Corey acknowledgement form. And then we have the application tab. The application tab shows them the season that they're, the seasons that they're regis registered to. It does have um, past seasons too. And then it also has the risk status and risk expire date. So the adult can log in and um, look for that information themselves if they don't know if they passed their career in, or national background test. Okay. And then most importantly right now is we have the certificates tab. This is where all the information is for your adults or for you to complete your safe sport training and your concussion training. So you would read this information again. Um, you do need to make sure you're linked to US Soccer. So you need to copy the access code before clicking on the link and completing your safe sports um, training. Safe sports is a yearly requirement. So if you've already took the initial training, you're going to have to take approximately a 20 minute refresher course. Now, Center for Disease Control, um, Mass Youth Soccer has a two year policy and your organization might have a one year policy. So you need to check with them. So for Massachusetts Youth Soccer, if you took the training June 1st, 2019 or later, you're good for this registration year. But you do, you might need to check with your local organization. Here's the link for the Heads Up Training. This actually links you to a document that shows you how to register with them. It's very important because they changed the training um, and the training is a little more detailed for the information that you have to put into your account before you're actually provided with the training. Could you speak to that briefly, Mary, in the sense that registrars, and we have a couple of town presidents on the line, are going to be approached with the question of, is this different? If it's different, how is it different? Can you just kind of give them the bullet points as to what's changed? So they changed where the training lives. And anybody who registered March 1st or prior, March, prior to March 1st, 2020, has to recreate a new account. And when they create that new account, they ask for more detailed information. Um, you need to know what region of Massachusetts you live in. Um, you need to connect. It, it'll ask you, like, basically why you're taking the training if, um, if you're a health administrator. So there's, there's a list of, of information that they ask now to create your account, which makes it a little more time consuming. That's why reading that document will give everybody that information. Um, it's important so for folks on the line to understand that CDC, that's not a mass use soccer change or, or no. a requirement that's, that's coming straight from the CDC, correct, Mary? Correct, CDC okay. changed where that lives and that is a, a US soccer policy. Okay. Um, I don't know if my, that, Thanks. so that's something we have to, to do. Um, so in this adult's account, you see their safe sports certificate when it was verified, their Corey verification, proof of verification certificate, and concussion certificate. Um, we ask that the adults do not upload a driver's license and you do not upload your Corey acknowledgement form. Okay, so that's basically the run through of what, what an adult will see and then they can upload their documents if they need to. So concussion certificate is always an upload. If they take the training, they have to upload their certificate. They should save it to their computer. Safe sport, you should, when you take the training, save that certificate to your computer. But um, the API feed, if you use the same first name, last name, and email address, and you did put in the US soccer um, national governing body that you're associated with, it should automatically approve you in the system. It might not, and you might need to upload your safe sport certificate too. If you're not auto approved within 24 hours, um, you might want to just upload your certificate. All right, so. I can confirm that that is true. My mine was already in there. It, it found it, it linked them together between the two accounts. And so I did, I only did not have to upload that document. Right, if, if everything matches, but I'll tell you, it's as simple as Don versus Donald. If you, if you have one account that says Don and one says Donald, it won't connect. 
So you just you need to have that certificate on hand in case. Okay. So now we're going to go in as an administrator. Okay. Um, so we would go to the login page, and the the login for an administrator for an adult is the same login link. And as an administrator, you have your account is up here in the right corner that you can toggle between. So if you click on my account, it takes you to your personal account. And if you click back on dashboard, it should take me back to the dashboard. So it's, it's circling up here. I've noticed that sometimes that's a little slow as well. Um, it, it is, and it depends on how busy um, actually the, the system is, right? They're on California time, depends on the day, the time, and the time of year. Yep. So sometimes it's very slow. Um, so when you log in as an administrator, the first thing you, you should do, I think, is make sure you're in the correct registration year because all, um, all the functions you want to do are in the registration year that your adults are registering to. So if, if you're in the wrong registration year, that, that does not help you out. So make sure you're in the right registration year. And then also on your dashboard, you're going to see players pending and you're going to see admins pending. The pending doesn't um, represent anything except if you use Club Connect as your registration system, then the players, if they're assigned to a roster, they might go to assign and the same with adults. But we, we do not, most of Mass Youth Soccer uses the system to manage their adult registration requirements and uploads player information. So adults will always show as pending for you and players will always show as pending for you. Now we have on the right hand side, they're called widgets, um, the risk status, profile photo, concussion safe sports. Um, I really wanna point this out, our electronic legal agreements, they connect to my program, which is the adult courier registration, they don't connect to your local organization. So they're going to show as incomplete, again, unless you use Club Connect as your registration system. So you'll see it says, you know, eight incomplete. We have one complete. Um, I'm not sure if how that, if, oh, that would be the one person that came up with uh, Club Connect possibly before they turn that off. Um, again, they're going to show as incomplete and that's okay. They did sign off on the electronic legal agreements and it does show that at, on the Mass Youth Soccer site. So we're going to click on concussion just to give you a quick view of what's in here. We have hyperlinks on top. So you have incomplete, seven, complete, three, total 10. So these are your registrants. Um, yeah, we're already on the incomplete, but I'm going to click it for you anyway. You can email um, these adults from here telling them that they're, they're not, I don't know if you'd want to say they're not compliant, but they have not done their um, concussion training or they have not uploaded their certificate yet. So there's an email function, email select members. Mary, who will it show in their inbox? Is that email coming from? Um, so here's, here's what you see. Um, it should come from, I think it, it says, it will say the person, if you enter your information, the from, email yeah, address. Yeah, say the name. I, I believe it might, but it will say no reply. It comes from, it might say it comes from no reply, mm -hmm. but then it will have, um, if you put your information in here, your email address, it will show it. Okay. I, you know, sorry, Karen, I'm not, I can't be specific. Yeah, no. I can get Just back good. to you on it. Nope, not okay. important. All right, and then CC, always CC yourself um, because the system doesn't do that for you. That way you have a, you know what you actually sent out. Um, you have these macros, you can write, you know, dear, and then first name, space, last name, comma, put the body of your email in, and then you would hit send. So right now we're going to go back. Back to the dashboard. We're going to take a quick look now at the um, player lookup, because that so in player lookup, and anytime you go into player or adult lookup, you really want to make sure you expand your page size to fit all your members. Um, some organizations have more than 500 players, but the max page size is 500. Click reset 
um, reset puts all your filters back to a default status because sometimes you feel like you've lost an adult or you lost the player, but really you just left a filter on. So then put your club, your program back in and hit search. Okay, so in this club we have that 12 players and go to test program and they have one. So they have one recreational player. So if you think you have um, lost a player somehow, you, you can look for travel. If you have a travel filter set, say that's why you'd want to come in and set, set them to default. The player doesn't come up, you're not sure why. It's because you have to filter on. So, um, and then again, if you leave it to all, everybody comes up. Application date, you can search by application date which um, because most of you will be uploading your player registration data um, and then mass use soccer or an administrator from mass use soccer will be pushing it through the system you'll get an email confirmation that says that that upload went through and then you can check by date to say it's the second or third upload that we've done for your organization or you've done and we've put through for you then um, you can put the the date in here and find the specific upload you're looking for okay then we're gonna we're gonna click over to the upload portal because we're working with players right now. So I think it's it's important to just go to the upload portal. Again, most of you will be uploading player registration data unless you use Club Connect system. You're going to want to take the template off the organization registration page that we showed you when we first started. Complete that. Click on the upload portal and start your new upload. Okay, before we start our new upload, I'll just tell you that if you did upload um, player registration data and we didn't process it yet, you should be able to review it in the pending status. Um, so you would start your upload and you can take the um, Excel file, the player template from here if you would like, but again, it's easier probably to have it completed before you enter the upload portal. Um, we wouldn't want uh, multi-club, but I guess we get that so because there's two clubs in this one uh, program or there's two programs in this one club so you would pick it should say just your club and your program and then make sure the season that you're putting the upload into is the one we're working in which is fall 2020 spring 2021 click next and click you will upload a spreadsheet click file it will let you go retrieve a file from your computer. I'm not going to do that tonight. But then once you click the file, you click next, upload the file. Um, you'll be shown how it, if you have errors or what if it's going to accept all your player registration data. So if you have errors, it, it will ask you to correct them before you can proceed. So you'll hit the back button, go back to your file, correct your errors come back and upload again until you don't find any errors. And again, please read the uh, player, the Mass Use Soccer Player Upload Help Guide because that will alleviate this for you. It tells you how to name the naming convention for your file and what to look for, what the common um, mistakes are, common errors are. And again, Mary, the uh, file format, the CSV file format is on the Mass Use page, the adult, um, um, adult registration, organization, organization page. Okay. Registration. Uh -huh. So if I, I see Mike on from Reading, so Mike, if you're gonna upload your entire Reading population, new soccer rep population, you could do it all on the file spreadsheet because I don't believe you have Soccer Connect as your registration database um, system, right? Okay. And just a, uh, this is Mike Borslow, just a quick note for those with uploads is that uh, essentially in order for your organization to enter a season to be in good standing, you have to get us an upload and it should be by the initial upload date. So we're not looking for you to get us absolutely everybody on that first one. A lot of organizations will, you know, we typically expect it in July, of course, we're deferring everything, but if it was in July, people will, well, let me wait till September so I have as much as possible. And practices have already started in late August. So it's best, in order just to get us the first upload and then we'll take subsequent uploads after that. The key on the subsequent uploads is not to 
re-upload everybody you already did, plus the new 20 or 30 or 40 kids. It's uh, just to do the, uh, the additional ads uh, through, that, through the process up to the final upload date, which is typically in October. A quick question. Thanks for that, Mike. That's good differentiator. So, um, Mary, how long do you suppose the process usually takes for the, for the whole file to upload, pre presuming no errors? Oh, uh, it, it's pretty quick. Um, if the okay. system, again, like you know, the system sometimes slows down due to high volume. Right. If, it, if it's not a high volume time, it, um, it reads that file within, you know, a couple minutes tops. Okay. Of errors. If there's no error as it goes in, um, you might not get your email that it's in there right away, but it's, it's a very quick process. Great. One thing to point out is that when it is uploaded, it's actually sitting off to the side before it gets into the system where when the, we will have somebody scrub the data. Uh, quite often we get people who put first and last name, mix those up, uh, dates of birth are not formatted correctly. Um, some people will have the last name and the address line. So, um, so right. ra rather than have it kicked out, we scrub it as much as possible. Right, and we do have the help guide for everybody. So those are, you know, the most common um, errors that occur when you go to upload. So you you need to to look at that help guide, and then when you put your data in, like Mike said, it sits in the holding tank, and then we're going to review it. And you know, we're we're hoping that you you've got it all in the right columns because our our job hopefully will be just to review and click send. Um, okay, but the help guides will really help you out on that. So to know what to look for. All right, we'll move on to the um, admins. This is great. We're moving right along. I got to go. Yeah, dashboard. You have to go back to dashboard. So you'll notice when you go to the portal or to the upper portal that you have to actually click on dashboard. Um, so now the admin lookup. Um, again, uh, really important here. Make sure you're in the correct season. Make sure you expand your page, page size. Click the reset button. Everything goes to default. That way you're not, you don't have a filter on and um, you're not calling saying, I, my, my members disappeared. We get my members disappeared because if you have a filter on, sometimes you can't see anybody. Um, so we'll hit the search button after we put our seven program in. Uh, we'll go through the filters a little bit here too. Filter, the, the status filter by is either no application status or pending, again, for most of us who don't use this system as our local uh, registration system, as the club registration system. So they're going to be listed as pending, no application status, pulls in everybody, that's very safe to use. You can look for your adults um, with the different risk statuses. I'll provide a document that explains what these are, but basically you're looking for approved and conditional and under 18 approved, those are the um, risk statuses that will, will print an adult credential. Then you can look for new registrants based on the application date. So the date they come into the system, uh, the system takes 24 hours to update. So if they said they did their, their registration today, you won't see that, you won't see it till tomorrow. So you can search by um, application date, risk expire date, um, very, very useful is the all seasons. If you have somebody who registered last year and you want them to register this year, but you notice they didn't, you can just put their name in and be in this season and they'll come up. Then you can just send them an email right from here also. So I like the all seasons because you don't have to worry when, when the last time that adult registered was. Um, first last name, missing pictures, which is great too, because if you go in and they're not a passport quality photo, you delete the, the photo you don't have to worry about searching those people out again, searching those adults out, I should say. Again, you'll just use either the widget that's on your dashboard or this missing picture filter um, and email them and ask them to upload a um, passport quality photo. So we're gonna go into Sammy's account. That was our test registration. And you'll notice the arrows on top. This is another really helpful tip. Um, you can use the arrows to page through. So when you're checking photos and deleting photos, you can keep going on each one. And it will also stay on whatever tab you're on. 
So now that we're in Sammy's account, he's um, FOIA verified, concussion certificate verified, safe sport verified. Um, with the, we're going to start with the concussion certificate. Um, if, again, Master Soccer is to your policy. If the adult uploaded a certificate that was in May, um, it should be deleted. The only way to delete a certificate um, that's already been approved is to actually unverify the person, press save, and did it save data already? Let's see. Click on their certificate again, and it gives you the, the opportunity to delete it. Okay. So if someone and, uploaded the wrong year, for instance, let's say they took the refresher course in uh, July 2020, but they took the initial course in May 2019, like that one just showed. Um, this is concussion, right? This, this is, concu oh, this is the concussion. concussion? Yep. Right. So, right. So this, again, master soccer to your policy. If your organization's one year, then okay. you want to come in manually, delete them. Um, if you unverify them, delete, press save again, it disappears until they upload a new certificate. Gotcha. Okay. Um, safe sport, again, the API feed hopefully will work. Um, and that is the one year policy. If somebody uploads one from 2019, it's not valid. So again, you unverify it, delete it, um, ask the adult to take the, the 20 minute refresher course. Okay, and now we're gonna, this is where we'll get a, a little more detail on the um, Corey Verify. So again, boxes to check is verified don't appear until you upload a document. So this document is in here, there is a checkbox. This is what we showed you to our risk manager information webpage when we first started on the right hand side. You would download the administrator proof of verification document and save it to your computer. Now, right now, um, due to COVID-19, there is um, a state of emergency, emergency declaration from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So you are allowed to teleconference, Corey verify somebody, which would mean you can Zoom, you can FaceTime, you can duo call them look at their government issued ID, make sure first name, last name, and date of birth are the most important. If it's not their legal first name, if it's if the last name is misspelled, if their date of birth is incorrect, that information needs to come to the Massachusetts Soccer um, Corey Administrator because we need to update that in the system. So you would not check them as approved until you sent that inform information to me. I corrected it in the system. Once it's corrected in the system, you can upload the document and check the box. And for most of those issues, we would process new background checks. It really depends on how close the name was. Anytime data birth is incorrect, they're going to have new background checks processed on them. Um, the second way to query verify somebody would be, um, actually, you can have them send you a notarized query acknowledgement form that is accessible from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And the third is the face-to-face -face meeting, which um, most of us most of us have um, always done and during that meeting you need to um, see their again government issued photo id verify first name last name date birth and sign the form but then you need to shred that form when it's all done after you check the box is verified now if their email address or not their email address if their driver's license is incorrect um, or even their address now they can go in and they can update that by logging into the system. You don't need to send me that information. Um, the adult themselves can change it by logging in. Okay, so those are the three ways to query verify. Um, all information is correct. Upload this document and check the box. If it's not correct, please don't do that. Um, send us the information once it's been corrected. Mary, let's do a quick time check. Where, how about, whereabouts are we on the agenda and how are we doing? Um, so look out filters. We're, we're just about to hit reports. Okay. Okay. Just a, Great. Just a re real quickie back on the core verification. So yep. that everybody understands it's, it's a once in a lifetime event. So once somebody's query verified once yeah. that's it for the rest of their, uh, their association with mass use soccer. Right. If they're already query verified, that box is checked. You don't need to, um, take any action. And also be aware that because of data migration, some of these boxes will be checked and it will say data migration and they will not have a certificate in them. And that's okay. 
um, we deleted information based on an upload date. So you might not see a certificate for the CDC for the concussion, um, but that doesn't mean the adult has to upload one. If it says they're verified in the system without a document, that's okay. And that's okay for the Cori verification also. So like Mike said, one time event, if they're already verified, you don't need to do it. If you don't see a document, don't worry about it. As long as it's checked, they're verified for any of those, okay? All right, um, in here you also see their risk status and as an administrator, you can change their username and password for them. So if somebody's having a hard time, you know, feel free to send them the information that they need uh, to, to get into their account. And user, uh, passwords are seven to eight characters long, seven minimum max is eight, one capital and one number. It's not easy, but that's their, their system. Okay, so um, now we're going to take a look at records. So we're gonna stay in admin lookup really quick. The um, team admin detail with all fields report, it gives you most of your adult members information. So it's a good report to have on hand. Once you hit the search button is when you'll see that the reports are available. And then you click on the little printer icon and select how you want to download it. I download everything as Excel. So you would download it, save it to your computer. Basically this information is what the adult put in when they registered. Okay. And then it has a risk status and risk expire date. So let me get back to, sorry. My eyes are, um, so now we'll go into the other report that's really um, a good report to manage your adult risk management requirements. So we're going to click on the counts report. The counts report um, has, it has several different actual reports in it. Select your club, select your program, and about a third of the, two thirds of the way down, you're gonna see admin credential print status. This is a, a great uh, report to uh, look at your members. Oh, I don't want to say report yet, but we'll show you that in a minute. Um, certificate information. So we'll generate the report again. You need to select your format, well, and then you can export it. But it gives you um, not only first name, last name, their birth or email address, risk status, if their uh, photo was uploaded, when it was uploaded, and gives you their concussion information, if they haven't uploaded the certificate, if it's verified, the date, safe sports, it's verified, date. Um, and then it also goes to the Cori verification, which is over here. Um, Cori verified by who and the date. So this really gives you basically everything you need to sort through and manage. And along with that in the tools on the dashboard um, to send emails out, hopefully um, we're covered pretty good there. Now this we're, report- on, oh. on the previous report, the best way to really use that is to download it into an Excel format. Right. Then you can manipulate it without having to worry about using it on the screen. Oh, right, that's right. You're right. You can download, I'm sorry, I didn't download it, but you click the format you want to up in the top right-hand corner or left-hand corner, it showed. Do you want me to show that again? Or are we good? I think no? we're good. Okay. All right, so the other thing with, um, with this report is we now have, or with the system is we now have save report. So you can name this, you know, um, uh, let's see, certificate. I would assume every time you run this, you could date it, so then you can see what's changed but, and dates. Today. Well, you know what? No. So let me. You can when you save it to your computer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what this function does is it doesn't save the actual report. It saves, clicks to get to where the report lives. Okay. okay. So now that we saved it in my reports, we just have to click on my reports. So certificate requirements ends up here. You click on it, and then it takes you back. To, to where you can get that new data, fresh data. You re-enter your club program, 
and then on this day you process you're, you're processing another report so you would date that report but that's all it saves you clicks and you have to find it you have to go find um, find the reports all right so we'll move on to uh, the ID card which is your print your admins adult credentials you would select your state, select your club, select your program. But again, um, never a bad idea to click reset because if you use a filter, your members won't show up. Um, so you want to click administrators and you can click a filter. Like I will take all, you know, and have all my members come down. You can do not printed and already printed. So that way you can keep track of, um, you know, who you need to print, you're not constantly sorting through to get, you know, oh, I already printed that person, so I don't want to do it again. So you can click not print it. And then once, once you do download um, their adult credential, it comes as a pop-up. Again, you have to um, allow pop-ups on your computer. You would click on the print, add in credential, and you'll see we only have one person so our system timed out here something uh, for some reason. Let me try one more time. Print admin. It must be the heat. Ooh, double check. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to contact technical support. Sorry, right? <laughs> um, I'm not sure why it's doing that, but I will tell you it, it comes as a pop-up. Um, and it has the year, the registration year, mm -hmm. the photo, and then just the nice receptive logo on it. Okay, then it once it, it comes up, it says, did it print correctly? If you choose yes, it printed correctly, it will add to the count here. So again, another another tool to help you on, you know, manage how many times you've printed and who you've printed an adult credential for. The, the ledger down here shows um, no picture, risk status failure is the R with the red circle around it. Um, there's, there's, many reasons it's risk status failure. It doesn't mean that they're suspended or they didn't pass. It, it could mean they just registered and it's not, not been processed. So you can click into the adults account to see what the issue is, to see if it says under review or suspended, which is truly the two that are failures. Um, or if it's like under one of the other risk statuses, call resend or uh, receive that are still in process. Um, and that's why it failed. The unlocked lock really, um, the unlock lock with a good risk, risk status would indicate that they're not up to date with their safe sports or concussion. So it just means something missing. Something's missing if you don't see the checkbox. Okay. Um, so that's admin credential. Again, administrator type, print admin credential. Make sure you have state and club and program. Um, all right, so we did, now we're going to take a uh, quick look in, at user permissions. So this is very important because this, when you give user permissions, you're allowing someone to come into the system and approve, upload documents, um, take care of those risk, manage, re, mis, risk management requirements for your adult members. So it's usually the president, registrar, and risk manager who has those permissions, and you can all help each other. So you'd all have access to upload a document check it off as verified, um, and run reports. Okay, so in your dashboard, on your dashboard on the top. Mary, can I interrupt you for a quick moment and ask this question? Um, there should be an ultimate administrator, I'm gonna guess the risk manager, right, who grants administrator privilege. So for instance, Bruno, who's on the line with us tonight is the new president of Software Without Borders. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm not sure, I don't wanna put you on the spot, Bruno, but I'm not sure if there's someone in the organization who no longer um, has admin privileges but needs it and they're not sure internally who can actually help them with that, can they reach out to you for help? Are you talking to Bruno? Yeah, oh, well, I'm talking to you, Mary. In other words, oh, yeah. Bruno's not sure because he's not, like he knows who the former Sorry. president was, but yeah. he's of not course. sure how. They yeah. can always contact me. I'm always, you know, it, it, I am definitely willing to help. I will go through the security tab with them and okay. we can delete um, old uh, administrators that were in there that are no longer with working with your organization. We can add your new administrators. 
um, that is not an issue at all. Okay. They can contact so, me with any questions. So the, the process, uh, Karen, is that when somebody completes a leadership report uh, with an update, uh -huh. we'll take a look at the president, the registrar, and the risk manager. We'll go into this, uh, the page that Mary's going to be going to in a second. Right, so we hit config. Yep, and we'll, we will go in there and we will update for those three names if they need to be, and we will delete old names. Okay, so great. If, if there was a change in a registrar, uh, we'll change that. Now, Mary will show you that, you know, the present, so anybody who has the permissions that Mary's gonna show you has the ability to give others the same permission. It's just okay. not one person. Right, okay. It, it took, it, so the president, registrar, risk manager, we have several, several organizations because of the numbers that they have of adults volunteering, they may give an assistant registrar or two assistant registrars access. So somebody, or a course submitter, so somebody will do the in-town kids and so, uh, coaches, somebody will do the travel coaches for girls, somebody will do the travel coaches for boys, and that way they can share the load. Great, thank you. Right. And so uh, on that note, Mike touched on the leadership report, really important. If you change any permissions in this section, you really should update your, le your leadership report because that is um, the contact information that we use to send out all communications from the state office. So if you go in here and you have a new registrar and you put them in here and you don't update your leadership report, that new registrar is not going to get any of the information from Mass Youth Soccer via email blast that we send out. Okay, so just be aware of that. The annual leadership report is very important. So you click all, on the... I just wrote, ultimately, once we feel comfortable that all of our member organizations have up, updated this section here, mm -hmm. uh, there's also another module, which we'll be uh, touching on at a later date, mm -hmm. is that we'll do away with the leadership report and just use the system to manage that data. All right, so you, you would click on the security tab. And what I would recommend too is, is if um, you're gonna give user permissions prior to even clicking on config and then security, find the adult in the system and copy their ID number. And copy their ID number for the adult that has a, um, the adult registration account. Some people are in, some adults are in the system as parents. You wanna use um, like an, an administrator or an adult's account with a date of birth. Okay, so you would copy their um, ID number, come to here, and you would click a click on lookup. Okay, you can search by last name, first name, but some people are, again are in the system with parent accounts and the adult registration account, so it's, it's better to just have um, the ID number with you. You click on that, you click select, um, and then, or search, I'm sorry, you click search, then, the adult comes up below right here. There's a select button. You click select. And what happens once you click select is their information populates in here and you would pick user type. So again, depending on who you're giving the permissions to, uh, club president, registrar, risk manager, or in this case, we had just listed as a user. So this is the title, the user type. Level of access is what provides them all the functions in the system, this level of access will let them do different um, administrative duties in the system. So you wanna make sure, again, you give them a high level of access if indeed you want them to verify your adult members, risk management, trainings, and, and information. Um, so you would, you would pick um, club registrar, Corey submitter, or president. Those have the, um, highest user permission attached to them. And then you would click update after you click it off. Um, if for some reason the adult doesn't have a username, it means they haven't really been in the system. So you really wanna make sure your adults register first for this current season that you're gonna give them permissions in. Once they do that, grab their ID number and come in and give them access. Okay. So I do you believe um, we've covered anything, Karen? I think you've covered all of it. I will um, say this. It, last we, last the observation was the, um, that we obviously need to read. 
the things that are on there. It seems as though the system's been set up to be as user friendly and as self to make allow people to be as self sufficient as possible. Maybe barring a couple questions, for instance, do I upload a license or no? No, do not upload your license. Um, so except for things like that, in addition to, you know, if you're using Club Connect as your town-based registration system, then things are a little bit different. In fact, they're a little bit faster and easier and there's more synergy between the systems. Um, but then in this section of what you've reviewed, the obvious thing here, is, especially for those presidents on the line, is that the information that's contained within the leadership report is, um, is, a, is the right place to start for you at the state office as well. So how about at this point, we've got a few folks on the line, we'll open it up, um, feel free to unmute yourself. And if you get a question from Mary, I will tell you just how you hear her tonight. This is her demeanor all the time. There's no question that's a stupid question. I'm sure she'd be saying this if I wasn't. There's no silly, you know, um, angle. You know, some of you are new, some of you are not so new. And uh, so anything is, oh, it, it's open season. So feel free to ask right. if you have. All questions are good questions. It, it means you want to know something and want to learn about what we all need to do in here. So, right. Yeah. Well, Mike and Mary, thank you for holding this tonight. I appreciate it. And we certainly appreciate all the work you've gone through to redo our webs, you know, the registration system every year. <laughs> um, I know it's as frustrating for you guys as it is for us. Uh, I do have a quick question on the concussion certificate. So, if I was understanding that correctly, if they upload their certificate, but it didn't carry through, we go in and we mark it off as being verified once we viewed the certificate, correct? Correct. So make sure it meets the criteria to be approved, right, to your Massachusetts youth soccer policy or your league or organization if it's one year. Um, and if it meets that criteria, you, you would up, you know, go ahead and check it off as approved. And just so you know, the concussion will never auto-approve. It will always be a manual uh, check verify for you. There's no okay. API key to that. Okay. And then should the dashboard update once you've done that? Uh, yeah, so what what we're finding, right, is that you have to either click save or there's an update button way at the bottom of the page, which I don't have here, um, when, you, when you update or you refresh your screen and then it's going to tell you you checked it off. But you have to do one of those three things, either refresh your screen click update or click that save button again. So I did okay. click save. I did refresh okay. the screen. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying update now to see if that. Okay, and it won't, you have a certificate up there and it won't let you so check? It, it shows on the member record, but when I go out to the dashboard, it's not updating the dashboard. It still shows it as incomplete. It shows on the member Oh, uh, okay, okay. So I don't know how long it will take. You're saying like the widget, is that on that dashboard to, that we went through? You can email from, right? Correct, correct. Okay, yeah. I don't know how long that might take to connect to that. I don't know if it's like a system update overnight or something. I only know that under their photo, it updates right away. Sorry about that. Okay, okay. okay. So yeah, it's updated yeah. under his photo, but I'm not okay. seeing it on the dashboard widget. Okay, it, it should, I would say by tomorrow, um, It the system does a lot of updates overnight. Like I said, if they register today to your organization, you won't see them till tomorrow because overnight is when the system generates that batch that says they registered. Okay. So that might, might. If Bonnie checks tomorrow night and doesn't see it there, what would be her next step? Uh, contact me, please. <laughs> I can contact. <laughs> You guys talk to connect and find out what happened. Okay. All right. I will certainly do that. I will say that Thank the you. overnight updates um, when we were on the system previously was probably my biggest frustration, um, especially as we were getting closer to the beginning of the start of the season because coaches would tell me, I've registered, I've done it multiple times, and I, you know, I'd ask when they had done it. Um, but because there was that lag time, I would lose a day before I can come back to him and say, no, I'm still not seeing it. Right. So, you know, in future enhancements, if that's something we could keep in mind, that would be great. I was going to say, so um, 
David, uh, one of our board members, you know, works with me on this all the time, and um, he has mentioned that to them. You know, we we agree with you, and we would like to see it done a different way, not a batch update overnight. So thank you. Your feedback is appreciated, and uh, we'll make note of that one again. Thank you. That that, that was my probably biggest frustration. Yeah. Sounds like you're not alone, Bonnie. No. <laughs> no it, it does. Does that answer your questions, Bonnie? And, and if so, is there anybody else that may have any questions for Mary? I'm set. Great, thanks so much. Yeah. Thank Mary, you, Karen. Yes, go right ahead. It, it's Steve Taylor in, in Medford. I just wanna follow up on something that Michael had mentioned. Did I hear you correctly saying that when we re-quarry this time, we're quarried for life? No. He went, um, he went mute. You're on mute, Mike. I can't hear you. Uh, Mary and I took mute at the same time. So, uh, so take what happens is, uh, with, yes, with Corey, uh, you are quarried with Mass Youth Soccer um, as a verification for life. That's, the, but we do re quarry people every three to four years, okay? But the verification is just the, technically, the physical verification that the person completing the quarry is in fact the person that we're hiring so that's that's the only part but the quarry we will run a quarry on somebody every three to four years and that requires that person to resubmit or is that an automatic process it's it's uh the system will recognize when their quarry is expiring and so when they do an annual registration and they're filling out all the data um, it will, it, they'll be notified if a quarry and a background check will be run. So if I was a coach in Medford, Steve would only have to actually physically see me and my identification once. Once, and that's then, exactly it. Yeah. Right, okay, yep. And then three yes. years from now, Karen will be notified that a quarry is going to be run automatically. She doesn't have to go in no, and no, reload no, no, any no, information. No, can I, no, can no. I answer this? Yes. So, so, okay, so, so let me explain to you. So the registration process is a yearly process. Our quarries and national background checks are good for pretty much three, like I said, three to four years. So the adult will register every year. They'll update any information they need to, but they won't see a submit background check button unless their, their quarry and national background check are going to expire during that registration year. Okay, so the system pulls out six months um, ahead so anybody who's going to expire during the 2020 2021 registration year when they register now they'll be presented with the background check button so they'll sign up on all the electronic legal agreements hit the background check button and we'll process those for them so they're not notified they're just doing it through the system got it can I, can I ask a clarifying question to Steve's about someone? So understanding that verifying someone's identity only happens once. If I'm a coach in Medford and I come to Steve and I'm, an, uh, I'm not married, he processes my, uh, everything gets processed under whatever my name is at the time. And then a couple of years down the road, I get married. So now I, ha I have a different name. I don't, do I need to present that back to Steve? Yeah, so when that happens, because so this adult has been in the system then coaching, right? Mm -hmm. This young lady, she got married. We should be contacted. We do a name change. And then because the name changed, that, that adult would need to be re-verified under the correct new name. So that's yeah. a, pretty much the only circumstance where that happens, unless somebody legally changes their name, which people yeah, do right. do. And if they legally change their name, then we need to change the name in the system and process you know, then do the query verification on them. And, and, and these are all Commonwealth of Massachusetts requirements, not Massachusetts soccer requirements. Right. And vice versa, if I'm in the system, get divorced, go back to my maiden name, Steve just needs to um, update that in the system in, in order Correct. for it to flow. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, the clarification was perfect, thank you. Any other questions that anyone has for Mary? Mary, I can't thank you enough, and you too, Mike, for, for doing this, understanding that this is a small, intimate group. Um, it's almost um, 
I, I, Mary and I were chatting before this began. I said, you know, this is the type of information that it's, once you hear it once, and then the second time it solidifies what you heard the first time. And so it's just the learning by repetition, just like the game of soccer itself, this is extremely helpful. We thank you for sacrificing your Sunday night. Uh, we know that it's not uh, easy. No. And, um, and thank you both for your time. It's much appreciated. I'm going to stop the recording now.